Hello, my dear students. Welcome to my humble world of PE. I am your teacher, Mona Lisa Bukatan, and today I will be discussing the introduction to individual sport, which is the track and field. Are you ready for our today's lesson class? If you are ready, just sit back and relax and enjoy the lesson. Before anything else, let's refresh your memory about our previous lesson, which is the different kinds of stretching, like the warm-up and cool-down exercises. I listed five different exercises. From the picture of the exercise posted on your screen, identify which exercises is for warm-up exercise and cool-down exercise. So, let's begin! What do you think is the exercise? Is it warm up or cool down? Very good! It is warm up exercise. Next, we have the quadricep stretch. What do you think is the exercise? Very good! It is a cool down exercise. And what about the jump and jumps? Very good! It is a warm-up exercise. Next, how about walking? Yes, very good! It is a cool-down exercise. And lastly, the arm rotation. Yes, it is a warm-up exercise. Very good class. Now, I think you are ready for our discussion for today. Let's define first the meaning of individual sport. Individual sport is a sport in which participants compete as individuals. Can you give an example of individual sports? Very good class. All your answers are correct. Here are some examples of individual sports. We have badminton, bowling, boxing, cycling, running, and swimming, and many more individual sports played in the Olympics. So now, let us proceed to our main topic, which is the track and field. Track and field athletics commonly known as athletics or track and field. It is a collection of sports events that involves running, throwing, and jumping. The name athletics is derived from the Greek word atlas, meaning contest. Going back to the ancient Greek, athletics was the only competition to be held in the first Olympic Games, which took place in the Athens in 776 BC. At that time, the single athletic event was known as the stage, a foot race which covered the lengths of the Athenian Olympic Stadium. In the 1896, the first modern Olympic Games were staged. Although initially of limited appeal, the Olympic captured the imagination of athletics and grew steadily, making track and field an international sport for the first time. In 1913, the International Amateur Athletic Federation, or IAAF, was formed by representatives from 16 countries. IAAF was charged with establishing standard rules for the sport, approving world records, and ensuring that the amateur code was adhered to. It continues to carry out these duties. Track events often involve a field or a running track of varying measures. These events are typically held in a 400-meter track. These include sprints, middle-distance events, long-distance events, hurdles, relays, road running, and race walking. We have first the short distance or what we call sprints. A sprint is a short running race. In a track and field competition, there are generally three different sprint distances. We have 100 meter, 200 meter, and 400 meter. 
We also have the middle distance. The middle distance races are 800 meter, 1,500 meter, and 3,000 meter. These races requires different skills and tactics to win. They rely more on endurance and pacing than just pure speed. Also, the runners don't stay in a single lane for the entire race. They start out in staggered lanes to make the distance the same for each runner. But the race soon becomes open with no lanes and the runner must pass around each other to gain the lead. We also have the long distance race. There are three main long distance races, which is the 3000 meter, 5000 meter, and 10,000 meter. These races are similar to the middle races or middle distance races, but the emphasis is even more on correct pacing and endurance. Hurdles. A hurdles race is one in which obstacles are placed at intervals along the track that the runner must jump over on their way to the finish line. Typical hurdle races are the 100 meter and 400 meter for women, 110 meter and 400 meter for men. Timing, footwork, and technique are the key in winning hurdle events. Of course, you still need to be fast, but jumping the hurdle in strides without much slowing down is how to win in the hurdles. We also have relays. Relay races are where teams of runners compete against each other. There are typical four runners and four legs to the race. The first runner starts with the baton and runs the first leg, handing off to the second runner. The handoff must typically take place within a given area of the track. The second then hands off to the third and the third to the fourth. The fourth runner runs the final. We also call the fourth runners the encore. Leg to the finish line. Common relays races are the 4x100 meter and the 4x400 meter. So now, let's proceed to the track facility. It is an oval shape with 8 lines. These events are typically held in a 400 meter track. We also have the equipment. We have the baton used in relay games, hurdle used in hurdle race, and starting blocks starting guns, and spike shoes. So those are the facility and equipment in playing track and field. Participating and performing well in running events requires some key skills to make it well in every event. So let's find out what are those skills. We have the body position. In body positioning, the head Trunk and pelvis should be positioned along a vertical line, which is perpendicular to the ground. This helps to ensure that the pelvis is in the most efficient position. We also have the arm and shoulder carriage. Arm and shoulder movements during running is important so the torques produced by the driving of the leg is more easily absorbed. When running, your shoulder must move in coordination with the arm just like this. We also have the action of the legs. There are two parts of leg action. These are the recovery phase and the driving phase. In the recovery phase, the rear foot leaves the ground. And in the driving phase, the lead foot touches the ground. Now that we are done on our lesson, Let's have your first activity. We will call this activity as activity log. In this activity, you will monitor the progress of your running speed for one week. You will do this activity for three days. Before I tell you the directions in your activity, let's have no first ever safety rules to minimize the risk of activity or what we call the related injuries. Here are some precautions and safety tips that you may follow. First, wear comfortable clothing 
and well-padded shoes that will protect the heels and arches of the foot. Next, always do warm-up exercises before any physical activity and cool down afterwards to lower the risk of strains and sprains. Next, be aware of the weather and environmental conditions. And lastly, listen to your body. Don't do physical activity when you don't feel well. So now, let's proceed to the direction of for your activity. First, perform a warm-up exercise before doing the activity and cool down after. Next, execute the recommended running activity for 3 days. And lastly, record your heart rate at the running time on your weekly activity log. The table posted on your screen will be your activity log for 3 days. Copy it on your papers then after you can start your activity. That is all for today. I hope you enjoy and learn our topic. See you in my next lesson and enjoy the activity. Goodbye class!